G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in today's video we're going to be doing my August 2020 fish room update tour. And it's been a frustrating month in the fish room, I should say. So I've got a couple stories to tell you about what's happened. And uh, we'll just get straight into it, okay? So the first update involves my Neolamprolobus tetracephalus. If you saw last month's video, you would know that they had spawned again and that I pulled out 14 fry this time. Put them in the egg tumbler. They finally were eating live brine shrimp and live microworms, so they were eating two foods and I felt a lot more comfortable with this batch that they would survive. But as you probably can tell in the tone of my voice, they didn't survive. They made it to the free swimming stage, so they were in there for about eight days. I kept them in there for about a further two to three days or so. I knew that they were comfortable and were free swimming and eating. Put them in the main tank, they were all dead within 24 hours. Very frustrating, very disheartening. Just, I don't know what I'm going to do with the treads now. The male looks like it wants to spawn again. Short of pulling out all the sand of my 4x2x2 four by two by two foot tank, I don't know what else to do. Uh, they will spawn again. Uh, they will spawn again on the substrate. And I will have to pull the fry out if I want to attempt to make, to, to try and save them. They won't be able to uh, survive in this tank with the Kawanga Golds and the other treads in that tank. But, I don't know if I'll ever successfully spawn them now. I can see the male courting with the female right now. They're going to spawn again in the next two or three days. They're swimming around together right now. I don't know if that's on the camera. So they're looking like they'll spawn this week. Don't know if the babies will survive. Next issue I had was with my Ventralis Tritica female. You would have seen in that video. She released six fry into the tank. I was very happy about that. Only a small batch of fry, but she is a very small fish, and it's her first time that she's reared fry. So I wasn't expecting even six fry. I thought I'd leave her in the tank. I even said that on the video last month that I would leave her in the tank, let her grow her maternal instincts, let her put on some weight in that tank, and before I put her back with the males, because I didn't want her to get harassed by the males after she hadn't eaten food for over a month. Come home from work, I noticed that one fry is missing, but there is only five in the tank. I leave her in there, I think something must have slipped the fry just died, and I can't find it. Leave her in the tank a couple of days later, I notice there's only four fry. Now I really suspect that she is eating the fry, so I pull her out of the tank, just pop her in with the males now in this tank here, and she's doing fine, she's eating, she's putting on weight. The four fry that are remaining in this tank up here are doing fine, they're all growing, they're eating, they're fine. Now I have learned a lesson, next time they spawn I will pull her out the moment she spits out the fry because she does eat her fry unfortunately. Next update is my albino bristlenose green pair, my adult pair. I've got a very experienced male in there who has raised about six or seven batches of fry since February 2020, now August 2020. So they're regular spawners, regular good spawners. I noticed what I thought was a slice of carrot at the bottom of the tank and I realised that's not carrot because I have a fed of carrot. Um, that's a clutch of eggs that the male has potentially kicked out of his cave. I pull the clutch of eggs out of the tank and put them in the egg tumbler that the treads were in. I realised later that the male didn't spawn with the female in his usual cave, he spawned with the female in her driftwood caves and that's why the clutch of eggs were out. Um, he's a very, as I said, he's a very experienced male and I didn't expect him to do that. So, clutch of eggs hatch in the egg tumbler, all is going well and then I notice on one day that there is a little bit of fungus growing on some of the infertile eggs. So I basically perform surgery on this clutch of eggs and separate the fungicized eggs from the uh, fertile eggs. It's going well, I'll put them back into the egg tumbler. So water is flowing across all these wriggling fry. And then slowly they start dying. And with them spend of 48 hours, I've lost about 70 albino bristlenose catfish fry. Very, very frustrating, very disheartening. I put a lot of work into raising those fry, attempting to pull the fungicized eggs away from the fertile eggs. Very delicate work, very painstaking work, and then they all died anyway. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with raising fry, that this month nothing seems to have gone right. And my fourth and final story is the most frustrating of them all, and it involves shipping 10 of my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold to Cairns. It took us about a month and a half to work out the date and time that, we should, that I should send the fish to him uh, to get our schedules aligned. So there's a lot of legwork involved in shipping live fish across Australia. And one of those is sourcing an airline approved live fish styrofoam box. 
And I was lucky enough that my cousin, he had purchased some fish recently and I could reuse that box. It also came with a blue plastic bag that I could pop all the fish bags into because all the fish have to be triple bagged. And I wanted to bag each fish individually this time. So I had 10 fish, 10 bags, double bag, it's 20 bags, and I was preparing this the night before shipment. I cut up all the little bits of newspaper, put them into the outer bag, and pop the inner bag in the outer bag, and then roll the outer bag down, like you see here, like a sock. Having the outer bag rolled down like this allows you to put water into the inner bag easier, and also to put that fish into that bag, and also bag the inner bag easier. So it's a long process, I do that the night before. The next day the bags are all ready to go, all I need to do is put water in the bag, put the fish in the bag, add some prime to that bag, and then seal the bags up. Now, the fish are not fed for about a day or two before shipment. That's because you don't want the fish to excrete in that little bit of water and potentially foul that water, releasing ammonia and nitrites into that water and killing the fish. Adding the prime further improves their chances of survival because prime will detoxify ammonia and nitrite in the bag. Also the fish are going to be in darkness for the time of transit so they're not going to be very active and that amount of water and that amount of oxygen is perfect for the fish of this size. All that said, the fish were going to be at the Sydney airport from about 2.30pm but the bagging process started at midday on Monday. Their expected arrival time in Cairns was 6.30 in the morning, Tuesday morning, the next morning. So they'd be in the bags for about 17 or 18 hours all up. And I was expecting to hear back from the customer at 6.30, around 7.30 in the morning to say he had the fish. Now, there was bad weather in Sydney on that Monday afternoon and I tried to buy insurance for the fish, but the courier company refused to sell it to me. They said they would not ensure the fish would leave on time, and I understood that. So I never sleep well the night of fishing in transit, but I expected to hear from the customer around 7.30 in the morning, and I didn't. I heard from him around 9.30, and I was really hoping that this message was gonna be good news, saying the fish were fine, and everything was over, it was done. But unfortunately, it wasn't good news. His message said that I'd given him the wrong address at Cairns Airport for him to pick the fish up. And he didn't know where the fish were. And he was driving around the airport for about an hour and a half trying to work out where he should go to pick the fish up. So I ring the Sydney depot up. I speak to the sales rep there and he says, yeah, that address that you gave the customer is incorrect. But that's the address that the Sydney depot gave me. He said, the correct address is blah, blah, blah. I ring the customer back to tell him this is the correct address. And then he tells me that he's had a friend of his that picks up fish from Cairns Airport who had just supplied him the correct address and that was the address that I had now given him. So we had the correct address worked out now. I was extremely frustrated for one, that they didn't know where their correct depot was. It turns out that the depot had moved in April 2020 to a new location. And now it was the end of July 2020 and they still didn't have the correct address of their own shipping depot in Cairns. All, almost four months. When a company, all they do is ship from point A to point B, that you think they would know that where their own locations are, and yet the attitude I was getting was that this was all my fault. He went to that office, the fish aren't there. It's now about 10 a.m. He should have picked them up at 7.30 a.m. Now it's 10 a.m. We're approaching 22 hours that the fish have been in the bags, and I'm extremely frustrated at that point. I ring and speak to the Sydney head office and they say that fish aren't expected to be landing in Cairns until 1pm. That's 25 hours in the bag. I tell the rep that's not good enough, the fish are going to die. The attitude I was getting from the sales rep was that it was all my fault. Um, how dare I question them where the fish are. Just very, very blase attitude about the whole thing. And I understand that because they deal with shipping live fish, live pets around Australia all the time, and who am I? I'm just one little customer of theirs. I'm small fry, basically. So I understand that, but I put a lot of time and effort into the fish, and it's extremely frustrating Then I've played my part, and then their sole purpose is to ship goods around Australia, and they can't even do that right. Anyway, I mean the customer back up, say that the fish are doing at Cairns Airport at 1 p.m., and he will be able to pick them up at about 2.30, about an hour and a half later. Obviously extremely frustrating for me to have to tell the customer that. Extremely frustrating for him. He tells me he has to go to work at 2pm and adding further issues to this. 
But like all my customers off YouTube, they've been extremely accommodating, extremely understanding, and extremely patient. Um, I've been so lucky with the guys that I've, that I've dealt with on YouTube, so thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate your understanding in all this. He was fortunate enough to be able to work out something with his work, so he could go to work later that day. About midday, he messages me to tell me that he's just checked the tracking number and that the fish are back in Sydney. So I check the tracking number and I can see that the fish did leave Sydney on time. They made it to, they made it to Brisbane Airport at around 2.30 in the morning and that they were back in Sydney at 10.30 that same morning. So they've gone from Sydney to Brisbane and then from Brisbane back to Sydney. Very frustrated. Didn't know what the hell was going on. Ring up the courier company again. They seem like they're getting frustrated with me because I keep ringing them, but I need to know what's going on with the fish. Why aren't they in cans yet? And they tell me, yeah, this is why they're arriving at 1pm 1, 1 now. It's because they're back in Sydney and they're going on a direct flight to Cairns. They assumed that I would know that, but they didn't tell me that. So how am I meant to know that? Tell the customer, yeah, this was all expected on their end and they're on a direct flight to Cairns that they'll be getting there at 1pm and he'll be able to pick them up at 2.30. He sends me a message, the customer sends me a message about quarter to two. Oh, it's a picture message of the fish in his car, the box in his car. He hasn't opened the box yet, we both don't know if the fish are alive. A bit of the anxiety that I've had for the last 28 hours or so is, is, is subsiding. However, we still don't know if the fish are alive. He gets home, he tells me he's floating the bags in the aquarium. It still doesn't tell me if the fish are alive in those bags. Then he immediately tells me that all 10 fish are alive and they're doing well, they're in the bags, they're all good. I couldn't believe it. I seriously couldn't believe it. I let out an audible woohoo! Like I was so bloody happy. It restored my faith in my ability to ship fish around Australia and it really gave me confidence that fish would survive for longer than I expected. A customer even messaged me saying that if he had known I'd bagged them as well as I did, he would have had a lot more faith in the fish surviving their trip to Cairns. So all in all, the fish had been on three flights to get to Cairns and we're in the bags for about 27 to 28 hours. So I was really amazed and really happy and it was a fantastic way to end the month after a frustrating month in the fishery. Now in all things said, obviously I was extremely frustrated at the courier company um, and then I started to feel guilty about it, funnily enough, um, because in the current world that we're living in with COVID-19 and coronavirus, people dying all around the world, why am I so worried about 10 little fish? It, also that week, people were losing their homes to flooding in, in New South Wales. It was horrible to see people's houses were getting into the ocean because of the king tides and the surges of, of the waves. And here I am worrying about 10 fish. It's ridiculous. It's so counterintuitive. And I felt so guilty about that. But I was so concerned about 10 fish and people are losing their homes and losing their lives. And here I am worried about 10 fish. But like I said, I put my heart and soul into these fish. I put a lot of time and effort into these fish. And I was extremely frustrated that I was able to do everything on my part, and yet the courier company couldn't do one simple thing, and that was to deliver fish from point A to point B, and not even have the right address of their own courier office in Cairns for four months. And it's just just frustrating and then for the attitude to be that it was all my fault. But in the end it was all good, it worked out fine, all the fish got there fine, they're all alive and healthy and well and, and, uh, and the customer's extremely happy as I am as well. So that's about it for this August update for 2020. I hope you enjoyed that video even though it was a bit more of a rant. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.